thank you for for joining and taking this time for the Lord and um, I pray that the Lord just honor your heart and the Spirit of God would just speak what nobody that he can and so we just come to you we come up under the authority of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God's heart and the things that no eye can see and no ear can hear no heart can interpret we are unable Lord we have no ability to go into that realm but you search out the deep things in the heart of God Holy Spirit and Father you sent him to be our teacher inside of us and to not just teach us but to release the very spirit and reveal the Son Lord it's so wonderful you're such a wonderful father and so we come receiving the gift you have given of the Spirit and come trusting in him and not our own understanding so have your way tonight Lord do what's in your heart Holy Spirit in each one who's listening do what's in your heart for the life of Jesus the lamb inside of them we just give you all the glory we thank you for this time with you together in Jesus name amen amen well tonight is interesting I have spent um, a lot of time before the Lord seeking his heart and direction for this class and now that's not going to earn anything or do anything but just so you know I hope that um, this will bless you and your desire for him so we're going to be looking at charts we're going to be looking into different things in the book but all of these things are to allow that wonderful Holy Spirit to reveal Christ in us to do a deep inward work the work that representatively he was meant to do in the 70 years in the Babylonian captivity in the people of God the eternal deep work bringing forth the spirit of the Lamb and well that's just shadows but here we are now and we're in that place in the real time of God dealing deep inside to bring forth his son in just the way that he longs for him hallelujah so let's take a look to begin with at this first chart it's called the Daniel Ex I think it's expansive chart or something it's so this um, chart was made from when I taught Daniel in 2017 and it came from just getting in the Word of God reading every commentary on Daniel I could find uh, I've had different people fact check this you're welcome to fact check it because boy I, I'm not the greatest at details but I do have a passion to seek out Jesus in the words so I I am really have gone through a lot of different commentaries trying to find the right dates the right information and one of the wonderful things I love about Daniel is that it is not chronological this book is not in chronological order it is I believe in spiritual order based on what God was doing in his people during the 70 years of captivity in Babylon and thereby the chapters are ordered according to it and there's some surprises in the chronological order of the the, the book of Daniel and the chapters but um, basically we're seeing him in chapter 1 be at the age of about 15 chapter 2 17 chapter 3 19 to 20 years old chapter 4 45 to 50 so that's chronological there um, we have him in chapters 7 and 8 between 58 and um, 70 years old um, but then we find there's a skip there and um, in chapter 5 chapter 9 you'll go let's just skip over to chapter 6 that's when he's 83 years old at the end of his life in the lion's den he's not a 20 year old guy in the lion's den like I always imagined and um, so we're not going to really go too heavy into this I would ask you and Lindsay you can take that screen share down now we were just going to glance at it real quick but I would ask you all to um, especially the students to take time to look at this students 
every chart that we have in this course is going to be your final for Daniel class and you'll get a blank piece of paper with the lines and you'll fill in the chart so you already know what your final is so it's a wonderful opportunity to be prepared early but hey why not just learn Jesus instead of passive final right who cares about finals let's pass that fiery trial by knowing the lamb in the way God needs us to so but there still will be a final so anyway um, so that's our first one um, let's see I've got some notes here Daniel is part of God's people being de deeply dealt with during the 70 year time period of the captivity. Okay, so we have Daniel coming in at 15 years old with the very first group of captives. And he's in there all 70 years. And during all 70 of those years, God is using him. God is prophesying through him. He's ministering through him. Amazing things, you know, just outwardly being working with all the different kings and, and all these different situations that we're all familiar with in the book of Daniel. But my, now everything that I share anytime is just not, not, I'm not saying it's the Lord. It's what I have found in my searching and I don't even fully trust it and because I know nothing yet as I ought. But I just submit my searchings of these scriptures to you to ponder to hold before the Lord to prove wrong to ask God and search the word if it if these things be so um, but definitely not take my word for it if anything be stirred up to find out if this is there if there's anything to what I'm saying and, and prove me wrong and then tell me what what the glorious reality truly is and I will be so thankful so I submit these thoughts to you and may the Lord share what's truly in his heart with you. But my opinion is that Daniel is many times approached as a book of prophecies about the end times, um, t talking about all kinds of things. I I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's one of the reasons why I never, ever, ever was interested in the book of Daniel um, until the day the Holy Spirit grabbed my heart and said, hey, <laughs> There's a lot in here that has to do with God's heart, and it's not all stuff in the earth, times and seasons and all that. It began when Pastor Randy, way back when I was in Bible school, shared a course on Revelation and Daniel. That started it, and there were seeds that went into my spirit from that course that the Lord was able to move on and expand with the next time that Randy shared Reve Revelation, which y'all are listening to right now. Um, and then just the Spirit of God when, in my voracious hunger for the prophets and <laughs> that he gave me. And just searching the script, good old getting in there, rolling up my sleeves and just, man, putting in the time, but not earning anything, just saying, I am diligently seeking. I am crying out. This poor man that doesn't deserve anything cries. And let's all just do that. I know y'all are. And so I'm always on a journey in the book of Daniel. But in that initial release in my spirit what I felt was from the Lord he began to say you know what Daniel's story is etched into these pages as somebody going through the 70 year captivity and having the lamb enthroned in his heart and the firstborn released through him in sacrifice and fulfilling I mean being dealt with being chastised being a uh, trained being being fathered by God for the seed of Christ in him to come forth in the nature and image of God, which is a slaughtered lamb, which is fulfilled in selfless giving, even unto death, that this would happen in this man. And that's the book of Daniel in my life. And I could care less personally when any end time event happens on what day and, and what world power is wearing 10 crowns and some I, I I'm not saying there's not significance even God given I personally am just not interested I just I'm personally not interested in it I, all I want to know is Jesus and I want him to be revealed in me and I want the end times to be when Christ in his lamb nature finally comes forth in selfless giving as the firstborn in sacrifice and it's no longer I and 
and it's pressed and tested and put in seven times hot trials and evening and morning sacrifices aren't robbed and the the abomination of my pro self isn't making desolate his altars <laughs> and God sees the image of his son in his eternal nature of lamb shining forth. First Peter talks all about the end times that, that I believe Daniel speaks of to my heart, to our hearts. Okay, so there, that's whatever, just thoughts. Okay, but we see in this man, in this teenager, in this young adult, in this middle-aged man, in this older man, in this really older man, to his very dying days, a progression of the lamb being enthroned and the firstborn being offered. And it is more beautiful than any chart or end time prediction or it is beautiful. You'll see some of those thoughts on that first chart that, uh, that we just looked at and that you have. So he is on a journey of Christ being formed in him and um, and all the things that happen to him and all the prophecies that flow out of him are part of what God's doing in him and isn't that true in our lives isn't it all isn't it all from the heart of God Father Son and Spirit isn't it all so the Lamb can truly be formed in us so Christ can be formed in us so the lamb can be enthroned so the body of the beast can be destroyed and the lamb can sit on the throne and he can release himself and sacrifice well this book is just phenomenal it is just incredible in the things it has to say about this process of Christ being formed in someone it's just incredible so let's look at Daniel when he's a teenager in chapter 2. Now, he's probably about, I don't know, 19 years old or so. I mean, he's young. And we have this situation that we have been talking about in the past couple classes about the king having this dream that makes his heart pound and none of the wise men can interpret it. And I pray that if you didn't get a chance to listen to the last class that was shared about interpreting the king's matter, um, or if it broke up or you weren't able to watch it, oh, I can't, I don't feel we have time to go over that, but oh, who can interpret the king's matter? Only the Holy Spirit in the wisdom of this age will never, never, and the wisdom that is God's we don't have, and only God can do this. Well, without that broken heart, and, and um, trusting in, in the Lord to interpret in, the, in that spirit, you're not, we can't, there's no progression. So that's why I believe so much was given to all surrounding the interpretation of the King's Dream in chapter 2. So much. It didn't just go into the interpretation with great, great purpose in our story of Christ being formed in us. And these dreams and their interpretations are what we're going to talk about tonight. And, well, so... Okay, so he's around a teenager in chapter 2 when he first interprets Nebuchadnezzar's first dream. And then in chapter 4, and I felt like we were going to, you know, make some paces tonight because we could spend forever in the book of Daniel and it's already getting, you know, we're going to class 6 right now. So um, in chapter 4, Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. He has a second dream. And he's about 45 to 50 years old when Nebuchadnezzar has the second dream. So he was a teenager when he interpreted the first dream, chapter 2. But he's, you know, older middle-aged man um, by the time the second dream comes to Nebuchadnezzar. But here's the thing. There's a third dream that comes. That's in chapter 7. But this dream comes to Daniel in his own sleep. It's not Nebuchadnezzar's dream or one of the kings that he served. This is Daniel's dream. He has it on his bed, in his head, while he's sleeping at night. And he's 58, between 58 and 70 years old 
when he has his dream. And that's in chapter seven. And it's incredible, incredible. Chapter seven and eight are the sinkhole of the book of Daniel for me for years and years now. It, just the sinkhole. But that's Daniel's dream. And then around the age of 83 years old, after all three of these dreams have been interpreted, that's when he goes in the lion's den. And that's something. So he had preparation before that time. And some of that preparation for him to go into that lion's den came from, well, we'll say the interpretation of these dreams, but it's so much more than that. But, but they're part of God forming his son in this man. And they're, they're part of that. So we're going to call this the cycle of dreams in the book of Daniel. The cycle of dreams. So we're just going to look real quickly right now at the first dream that came to Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 2. So as a young man, Daniel is confronted with Nebuchadnezzar's dream. It's one of the first things out of the chute. Um, and this is the thing that makes Nebuchadnezzar's heart pound. Now the Holy Spirit has shared um, different angles from how this dream can be interpreted and even how the king can be understood to be us or even the Lord himself. But we're going to look at it from the, the angle of it being Nebuchadnezzar, the man himself and his dream. So he's confronted with Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Nebuchadnezzar's heart, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, his heart is motivated by world domination through power. I mean, this, this is what makes Nebuchadnezzar's heart beat and skip a beat. You know what I'm saying? And world domination and power. I mean, it's, that's, that's, this guy wants to run the world. And he does. And God has him doing it for a season. His dream deals with the kingdoms of this earth and who will ultimately reign in the realms of men. And uh, if you've taken the time to read chapter 2 and that dream, um, you'll see it there talks about this great image and this image has this head of gold made of fine gold and then it continues down to silver and all these other things mingled down with with clay at the feet and you know it's all in chapter two but it is revealed to Nebuchadnezzar that he is this head of gold his kingdom Babylon is this head of gold and so you know I believe to King Nebuchadnezzar, and I think the scriptures bear it out, the fact that he was this head of gold was the thing that really stuck with him. It, not the fact that a little stone not made with hands was going to take down all these kingdoms and become a great mountain that filled the whole earth. I, I don't think he really heard that part because that's not where his heart was at. What he heard was you are that head of gold. And you know what? He never did forget that. That stuck with Nebuchadnezzar. So much so that he decided to go ahead, even after the God of heaven revealed the matter to Daniel and told him the end of that golden head was that it would become as chaff on the summer threshing floor and winnowed away by this little stone made without hands that was going to break it. Didn't quite you know, hold on to that. He held on to the greatness of that golden head that he felt he was. So he has this huge statue, 60 foot statue erected in his name, a representation of himself, this golden statue based on this image, this great image based on this dream. And um, so, you know, this is the first dream. And Daniel's brought in to interpret this dream. And once again, Daniel isn't just there to be the local dream interpreter by the Lord giving him wisdom to the Lord's wisdom and insight to interpret dreams. That isn't why God sent Daniel to Babylon. He sent him there to deal with him, himself, to deal with Daniel. To be a part of the eternal thing God was doing in his people at that time. So, so Daniel is I mean, Daniel's with this guy all the time. He's with him all the time. And can you imagine 
because he's serving in the king's court with the other three Hebrew children. So, and he's had access to him because he needs his help with these things that only God can help and do. And they all know that the spirit of, of the true God is in this Daniel kid. So he has access in there to the king. He sees him. He sees his haste. He sees his crazy react. He'll hew you to pieces, burn your house down, and destroy your family if you don't like him. If you do like him, the next day he'll promote you to the second in charge of the whole, the whole kingdom. He's been around him. He has observed in this man that he has served his government. He's observed that. The Lord gave him the interpretation of the dream. He watched the statue being built. He saw his friends go into that situation and not submit to that spirit. He saw the consequences. He saw the Lord. He saw all these things. He was involved in all of this. And, um, you know, those things were seeds put inside of Daniel's heart to ponder. To ponder, not, not just to get an interpretation of a dream. You know, he wasn't supposed to just, at the end of the day, in chapter 2, at, after chapter 3 as well, with the, the statue and all the things that came out from that dream and manifestation, he wasn't supposed to just chalk that up to an event or chalk that up to God shared something with me, gave me an interpretation for a dream. He was supposed to behold the man, behold the image that was the man, behold the nature of the image that caused that man to want everyone to wow and worship him. And notice the government. Daniel's a book of governments. It's a book of dividing out time, times, and the dividing of times. Boy, oh boy, is that going to be powerful when we talk about what that means. Of dividing out governments so that the governments in us can be divided out. So that the true government, which is that little stone that the builders rejected, would take down all those other governments in us and become a great mountain, Mount Calvary, that fills our earth with a slaughtered lamb. You know, again, it's not all about out here in these governments. It's about in here and the dividing of what's governing me and a little slaughtered lamb taking them all down in death and being enthroned. I mean, this is over and over again in the pages of Daniel and in the journal of his life. But it begins with this very practical daily experience of Babylon and its king thrown into a big old dream that just thoroughly manifests the spirit of it, followed up with a huge manifestation of it with this golden statue, sealed up with the fiery furnace seven times hotter, and a manifestation of the Son of Man in a whole nother government, spirit, nature, sweet savor, burnt offering coming forth in the midst of it. The dividing of kingdoms, the discerning of nature. He's meant to be learning. Discerning. What image does God want us in? The image of his son. What is the image and nature of his kingdom? For how shall the kingdoms of this earth become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ if we don't even know the image of that king? And if we don't know he's a slaughtered lamb, little tiny preemie that reigns from a cross being crucified by his spit upon. This is, we'll never know him. We'll crucify him thinking we do God's service because we haven't seen the image. And we can't, we can't see that image, but by the Holy Spirit, that's the purpose of chapter two. That's why it's so important to, to weep over the things that come in chapter two before the dream because we all have that. We need that approach that Daniel had to be able to begin to discern 
the kingdoms, that they might be divided in us, that we might know by God alone who can only show us this, what his son's image is, so that we will know it, that we will know him and be changed from glory to glory into that same image, even by the Spirit. Daniel is being thrown into this head first off the deep end in all kinds of angles, angles that are real life. That's chapter two, teenager, teenager. And he's pondering that up into his mid forties. When good old Nebuchadnezzar has another dream, dream number two. Let's take a look at that and <clears throat> a chart. Here's our second chart. And this chart has all three of the dreams, Nebuchadnezzar's first and second and Daniel's in chapter seven. And aspects of these dreams for the progression of what God's doing in Daniel to form his son in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So dream number two, let's go ahead and turn to chapter four and let's read this dream a little bit Chapter four and we're, we're going to start with verses four through six i nebuchadnezzar was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace i saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed in the visions of my head troubled me therefore made i a decree to bring in all the wise men of the world of babylon before me that they might make me make known unto me the again here it is the interpretation of the dream okay so we've heard that before let's go to verse 20 and read to 26 and this is going to be the dream of course daniel receives what only god can know the interpretation of this dream and he shares it in these verses with king nebuchadnezzar so let's read verse 20 the tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong whose height reached unto the heaven and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which all the beasts of the field dwelt, upon whose branches the fowls of heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and thy dominion to the ends of the earth. Sounds like the Babylon in Genesis. Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots there in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts. Notice the word beast, huge in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation, with eternal significance in how God wants to deal with each one of us right now. Let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O King. This is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon you, my Lord, my King, the King. And they shall drive you from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts, like kind of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till you know the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after thou shalt have known the heavens do rule. So here we have the second dream that was in Nebuchadnezzar's dreams, not in Daniel's. This was Nebuchadnezzar's dream. It's a great tree. It's the king himself cut down and manifested to be a beast. Now notice in chapter 2, this same image, this same king, this golden, fine gold head, as signified by the first dream, by the interpretation which God gave, which was Nebuchadnezzar, fine gold, not tried gold, purified seven times in the fire, but fine gold. <sighs> Full of himself, pro-self to the max, making everyone worship it as God, but, but gold. 
We saw it in the manifestation of that statue. We saw the dream, the image manifest in that statue that he wanted everybody to worship him. He wanted to be as God. Very, you could say, Luciferian. But in chapter 2, we see a little clearer. And remember, Daniel's 45 so or so years old now. He's been holding on to this since he was a teenager and living in proximity to the same king for those 30-some years. So talk about experiencing government daily. Yeah, he got to watch the beast in action. But in dream number two, God says, hew that tree down and make it be seen as what it is. Manifest clearly the image of that fine gold statue of that dream, that great image in the dream that wasn't that little rock that took it all down, hewn without hands. Show a little clearer now what that great image looks like. What everyone thought was so amazing bowed down to as gold. You know, there's a lot of Judeans there in Babylon where we have only record that three stood, said, I won't bow to this image. Let's wait 30 years and let's have another dream. And let's hew the tree down and show the image for what it is, a beast. And seven times let the man, Nebuchadnezzar, this is now somebody else. Daniel's looking at somebody else, Nebuchadnezzar. You know what, dude? I have been around you for 30 years. I knew you weren't fine gold. I knew you were a beast. But this proves it. And you're getting your just reward. You go live as a beast in the field. And I hope God deals with you because you know what? You deserve it. You've caused all of us so much misery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can think that about anybody, you know, that you feel these thoughts towards. And the interpretation goes unto the king. And the interpretation goes unto my boss at work. The interpretation goes unto that person who drives me crazy. Finally got dealt with them. He cut the tree down. He made them get their just rewards. Glory to God. I've been waiting my whole life for this to happen. Now everybody knows they're a mess. They need the Lord. They're a beast. <laughs> How horrible is that? I'm not saying Daniel felt that way, but I, I bet somebody somewhere has felt that way. <laughs> okay. But it's still looking this, 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 pointing, pointing, you know. So he's in his, uh, you know, 40s or whatnot. But now he gets a little older, mid-50s, I believe-ish. You can look at your chart <laughs> and then check that out. And guess who has his own dream? Yes, you guessed it. Daniel has a dream. Daniel, the man, the older man now. He has a dream, but guess what? It's his dream. It's not the king's that he's going to interpret for the king. Daniel needs an interpretation for himself. And you know what? In my humble and worthless opinion, that's when we really start getting the interpretation we need is when we start seeing it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, that you need to deal with. And this dream that the Lord gives Daniel is, oh my Lord, it is a gift from God our Father for any son like Daniel, like all the Judeans and Ezekiel, like Nehemiah, like Ezra, like Zerubbabel, like Joshua, like all the, uh, oh, all the Haggai, Zephaniah, all the, all the people in Babylon who had a heart for God. This dream is a gift. But you got to be willing to make it your own. And you know, 
I'm not saying this is true about Daniel because I perceive it probably wasn't, but what if it took somebody from their teens to their mid-fifties just to be open, Lord? The interpretation is unto me. It's not for prophecy first or for seeing deep things, even by the hand and wisdom and spirit of God. Or the interpretation must come into my inward parts, into the depths of my being, until my kingdoms are divided and my beasts are dealt with and my thrones are or rooted out and pulled down and the ancient of days does sit and the lamb is enthroned and god help me let it not be a dream let it not be an interpretation let it not be something i saw in the word let it not be something i shared with the king or the hebrew children god bring it home bring it home you know you read things in these chapters seven and eight which are just like i said like sinkhole from my heart in these many years now and he has things like my cognigations or I, I was sick to my stomach I fell I couldn't get up I I was so upset I couldn't go to work the next day I mean these are the kind of things Daniel said after these dreams they hit him so deep it just it got him it was like that double darkness that hit Abraham in chapter 15. It's like, oh Lord, for this seed to possess my land, you got to deal with me. It's going to take 400 years, it said in Genesis 14. <laughs> oh Lord, God, don't let it, I don't got 400 years. I don't have 40 years. I, I need you now. I have 70 years. And at 55, he maybe would have said, I've got 15 to 20. <sighs> I need this to come here lord or these are the dreams on my bed in my head in my heart that you can answer had his dreams but i lord have mine and my dream is that your son would be more than a teaching more than a song more than a ministry more than a prophecy more than an interpretation but a lamb in me divide me out cut with double-edged sword root out like jeremiah said i came i have to root out i have to break down before i can build up root it out divide it out cut between the joint and marrow divide between the soul and the spirit lord get the sun formed in my inward parts and take off the dross move up surface these beasts and remove them until the bodies of the beasts are destroyed and cast into the fire this is all in the dream in chapter seven. Oh, who has time to go into every line you just have to go you have to just go and be with the, the word and the spirit and your father and cry out and look and sit there with daniel and just enter in this is our inheritance he was given for us He's our friend. These were my best friends in Bible school. And they I'm still in Bible school. Who are my best friends? Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Micah. Oh my gosh, Jonah. Hey guys, Zephaniah, Zechariah. You know, we've got Peter who they're our friends. Go be with them. Be with them. Sit with them. Drink from their words in the spirit of the living God. Open up the heart of God and, and start dividing kingdoms in you. Start going deep, 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 deep. That's what those 70 years were for. It wasn't working in Jerusalem. They had a time where God was moving, moving in the kingdoms of men to divide them out, not out here. Not out here, in here, in his people, in his people. We're his people. We're his people right now. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. We can sleep through it. We can interpret dreams through it. We can point at Nebuchadnezzar through it. Or we can say, Lord, right here, right now, let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, in chapter two, we have, yes, we have three Hebrew children standing in a fire. And the Son of Man manifesting, and it's glorious, and yes, it's a fire, and hallelujah. And I know the Lord can share much with all of us. But it was a one-time thing. In chapter 8, we have the evening and the morning sacrifice being robbed for 2,800 days. One-time events don't hack it with three teenage boys standing up on a good day. 
We need government. We need beasts dealt with. We need the deep in working of the cross. We need to see the image that no man can see and only God can reveal and see it so much that we're changed into that same image by God, glory to glory by the Spirit. We need to know what that image is and no man can. We need to be so humbled. We need to be dealt with like Nebuchadnezzar was. We need to be dealt with like Daniel was. We need to cry out, Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Whew. I am so sorry for getting so, you know, passionate about that. I, I don't mean to be. I just can't help it. I, please, please don't mistake my, my passion as I know or I'm something that I'm not. I'm nothing. I just, I really love the, the Word of God. I love um, they, these just, these. this book means, you know, more to me than the Jesus that I have begun learning in this book is more important to me than houses and children and a life I, I than all the world could give me. I love this Jesus and I want him and it, I don't know him and it, but probably what I'm saying isn't isn't right in many ways and I'm sorry. Oh but but, but the word is right and the spirit is right and it is I know it is good the word is good and the spirit is here. And he's ready to deal with me, and he is dealing with us, and it is, it is such a time. Time, times, and the dividing of times. Twice in Daniel and once in Revelation. It's happening. Now in our lives, and these things in Daniel that we're speaking of, and in Revelation that we're learning of, are the time times and dividing of times in our life upon which the judgment comes. And these things about interpreting image and government and nature precipitate the true time, times and dividing of times upon which the judgment comes. It's not a Bible school theme. It's not a great book of the Bible class. It, it's, it's, to me, it's why there's a universe and a creation. Let us create man in our image. In our image. Let us create mankind. Next half of the sentence, in our image. It's why we're here. It's our purpose, if you will, from God Elohim's heart. So if we go to Elohim's heart, maybe we'll hear more clearly what the real deal is. And his spirit will open up all oh, the wonder and the awe of these words. Now Daniel's dream in chapter 7 has four beasts in it. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream in chapter 2, his first dream, there was four parts to the statue. The head being gold and it went on down in lesser metals and such. But there was four, four parts of that statue representing four kingdoms. And in Daniel's dream, there's four beasts. And um, I was going to go into some of the interpretation of those beasts, and I even asked the Lord for a little chart, but I don't feel like the Spirit wants to go there, so I'm not going to, because that would be terrible <laughs> for everybody. Instead, I feel like I'm supposed to stop, and we're supposed to pray, and not go any further. As God knows, we don't need to go further if it's not Him. So I choose to stop and be with Him. Let's just pray. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. Have Thine own way, Lord. Have Thine own way. Yes, Lord. May the, as you were with Ezekiel, may the heavy hand of God be upon us. Oh, Lord, not the heavy hand of man, not the dealings of this earth, oh, but the heavy hand of God is more powerful than all the realms of earth and men could bring. And it is the one hand we want to feel. We do not fear man, we fear the Lord. And the times and the seasons of his heart and dealings among men, we bow 
we sensitize. We focus, Lord, and if we need to cry out, Lord, we feel if there's a spirit of slumber and distraction that we might be as we've ever been so attentive right now to the heavy hand of God pressing this clay into the right image into the image of your dear son that we might shine forth his glory that we might even know what that is which no one can know unless it be revealed so Lord I just pray that you would bless us as we seek you and we desire you more than fine gold and choice silver and all the rubies as it speaks of in Proverbs we cry out for you for this wisdom and we ask you Lord not for our sake but for your heart and desire and purposes Reveal your son in us, Lord. Thank you for this time. We look forward to our time next week, but may the time between now and next week be filled, filled with the living word of God. And may we all come with our bucket full of choices to Jesus that we found, that we found. Hallelujah. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah.